The Midland Railway's main line from Bristol to Birmingham is famous in railway circles for the severe gradient it encounters as it passes over the Licky Hills, just south of the Midland city. The top of the climb is at Blackwell, where we join some loco spotters as they view two British Railway Standard Class 5 460s, the second coming up the bank with a Standard Class 9F at the back. The top of the climb is immediately to the south of the platforms, where a Stanier Class 5 shows the extent of its severity. On the back of this train is a Western Region Class 4200 280 tank, number 5226, which dates these sequences after May 1958. The Midland Main Line had been placed in the Western Region after nationalisation in 1948. The Licky Bank starts at Bromsgrove Station and from the platform can be seen the foot of the bank. Banking engines would come down the bank light engine frequently in convoy, especially when the line was busy. They were stabled in sidings to the west of the line. Alongside the big 280 can be seen a Hawksworth pannier tank. These became the standard bankers under the Great Western regime, the 4200 only lasting a short while. Banking engines were classified on a special system based on the power of an LMS Jinty tank, the forebears to the panniers. The 280 was equal one and a half, in other words, equivalent to one and a half Jintys. The panniers were equal one, and the BR9F equal two. So the one and a half tank didn't fit neatly into the system. The most famous Licky Banker was Big Bertha, a unique Midland Railway 010, which had been scrapped and replaced in 1956 by a BR Standard Class 9F 210. This engine inherited Big Bertha's powerful headlamp for buffering up at night. This train has equals three banking power. The old order is seen here as two of the Jintys are passed by an LMS Class 2P 440 on one of the infrequent local passenger trains calling at Bromsgrove. These varied the pattern by having the bankers buffering up in the platform, as all other trains stopped outside the station. Even a four-coach train needed a banker, as the gradient was 1 in 37.7 for a distance of two miles. Another 2P climbs the bank with a gas wagon at the back. These wagons were used to deliver gas to railway stations before the national distribution system was installed. On the footplate of the banker, we see the procedure at the top of the bank as the train accelerates away from our Jinty. Banking engines didn't couple up for obvious reasons. gave a panoramic view of trains coming over the summit, and Pat Whitehouse's family enjoyed the sights here, at the station only a few miles from their home in Birmingham. All the railway roundabout programmes were produced at the BBC's Gloucester Green Studio in Birmingham, after editing by Pat and John Adams. Both live nearby, and still do. 
so they were able to go into the studio to provide the commentary, which was given live after one rehearsal. Any fluffs had to be covered up at the time. We remain at Blackwell inside the signal box to see the procedure for the control of trains on the Licky Incline. The upline from Bromsgrove was provided with an intermediate block signal to allow two trains to climb the bank at the same time. After Blackwell had accepted an up train from Bromsgrove, the train left under the gantry at the south end of the platform and was then under the control of the Blackwell signalman. As the train accelerates up the bank, the Bromsgrove starter returns to danger. In the box at Blackwell, the signalman pulls off to give the train a clear run through the section. The train is first shown as following train in section as it proceeds up the bank towards the intermediate block signal. The line was fully track circuited and the train's position was shown on the signalling diagram. As soon as the train has passed the intermediate block signal, it shows as leading train in section, and the signalman can return the signal to danger and accept a second train from Bromsgrove. It's interesting to note that both the locomotives seen here are Caprotti valve-geared versions of the familiar Stanier Black Fives. At Blackwell, the indicator shows that the signalman has accepted the second express, and as it runs onto his track circuits, it's shown as following train in section. All this is also displayed on the signalling diagram. The leading train comes past the box as the signalman looks out to ensure that the complete train with its bankers passes his box. When he's satisfied the complete train has passed him, he sets his home signal to danger whilst the second train approaches the intermediate block on the bank. This can now be cleared to allow the train to continue its climb as far as the signal box. With the banker cleared out of the way, the road can be set for the second train to proceed without being held up, as the leading train will have accelerated away on the level beyond Blackwell, giving a clear run for the second train. The signal returns to danger, and the bankers can reverse across to the down line to return to Bromsgrove, watched by the signalman. More than one banker at a time can be signalled in this way. Treatment of freight trains on the Licky also merited special attention. This Midland 4F has just come out of the goods loop at Blackpool and is to proceed down the bank. Note the bankers on the down road. In steam days, most freights had at least some of the wagons loose coupled. This meant that the wagons didn't have brakes controlled by the locomotive, only hand brakes on the wagons themselves. However, in many instances, freight trains would have a fitted head the wagons at the front of the train had been fitted with locomotive controlled brakes. In order to prevent the train from running away down the bank and pushing the locomotive along, it was necessary to apply the brakes before descending. The hand brakes had to be applied by a shunter at the side of the track using a special pole as the train passed. This practice would certainly fall foul of health and safety at work legislation today. If the train had a fitted head, only every third or fourth loose wagon had to have its brakes applied. If it was fully loose coupled, all wagons had to have their brakes on. The signal goes off again to allow the passage of an up freight. These would usually take their bankers on in the reception sidings on the upside at Bromsgrove. Finally, we see a pair of jinty bankers returning to their base. <laughs> 